Well folks, here we go. Another one from Pete and Sal. Um, today we're going to talk about what you wear on the boat. Sensibility, ease of cleaning and hypothermia. The important thing with uh, living on a boat is making things easy to do. My wife and I are both very clean people so change your clothes regularly. But this little subject is a bit awkward to say because I'm going by things I've heard from people like restaurants, cafes, we have lots of friends who own these in France and they say they love the boat and people coming in but quite often they smell of old boat. Now one of the problems of these I'm afraid is simple hygiene. Yes we all shower, we all wash, but do we change our clothes regularly? Now quite often I've spoken to a few people and they say well yeah yeah I change my clothes once a week because you know they take a long time to wash and dry. So let's get into this first. On the hygiene basis if you're going to buy clothes for on a boat you want to keep it simple. You want things that are light, less cotton the better because it's very hard to dry, it takes a long long time to dry. You try drying a sweatshirt you'll find out. You need stuff that's warm, but you also need layers. So obviously if you've got layers, <coughs> you've got more clothes. So more clothes, more space. And there goes your problem. So what I'm going to advise you is what Sally and I use. Summer and winter you can do the same thing. Now, you don't have to go to a marine shop for this. You can go to a, a hiking shop. There's loads of places that sell this stuff. It's the fluffy stuff, polar. A lot of people think that you only wear polar when you don't want to get cold, but that is not strictly true. Polar is a marvellous, marvellous invention. It has what it calls wicking properties. So if you perspire a lot and you've got a light polar, something like a, a 100 grade, which is the lightest they make, and you're wearing it, it will wick the perspiration through the polar to the outside and get rid of it. And by doing so, it also gets rid of some of your sweat. So this stops the smelling problem as well. The other thing is these light, I've, I've got a, a light polar 100 that I wear in the summer. I can wash it by hand, wring it out. And if I put it out in the sun with a little bit of wind in 20 minutes, it's dry. That's how fast the stuff dries. You can pack it up and put it in your pocket. That's small. So you use layers, so you have a light t-shirt, a polar like that. Next thing you can do is you can have a light polar jacket, jumper. It's one of these you pull over your head with a zip. Now they do these in several, they do it in 100, they do it 200 and 300 where it's very, very cold. So for the summer, a 100 on top of that, nice and cozy. Put this under your waterproofs and you'll be really cozy because even in the summer believe it or not you can get really really cold trousers let's say if you're sailing in the winter in the winter i would use either trousers like i'm wearing now the tracksuit trousers i personally wouldn't ever wear jeans it's a well-known fact that jeans whip the warmth away from you if you go out on a cold day and you're wearing jeans, you can feel it. You know how cold it is. But if you're wearing tracksuit pants, they stop a lot of the wind. So therefore, if you've got those underneath your waterproofs, you're nice and snooky, nice and warm. And underneath those, you could wear thermal long johns. And don't laugh at this, folks, because I'm deadly serious. They make for women a thing called microfiber tights. Yep, let's have a good laugh, eh? Let's go out on the feminine side. You wear a pair of those under a pair of long johns and your tracksuit trousers with some waterproofs and trust me, you will be as warm as toast and so will your feet. Socks, same thing. You can buy thermal socks, they are the best and a good pair of wellies. Now, you can have several layers, which I think is best. So you have a light layer, which is your, okay, your tights your nice light t-shirt then you have your long comes thermal underwear then you have your mid-layer jumper 
then you put your waterproofs or if it's really cold you can put your trousers on and then you put a, a polo jumper on then you put your waterproofs on the other benefit of these things is polar doesn't weigh as much as cotton and wool when it's wet so although we wear flotation devices like life jackets and one piece dry suits they still have to keep us up and I've seen several people with a 125 Newton life jacket and I've seen them wearing a nice woolen jumper and a nice cotton sweatshirt and jeans and I've said to them do you know how much that weighs when it's wet no idea I said well soak them and weigh them they then realize that the 125 Newton life jacket is going to have to struggle so always are on the safe side of safety with life jackets either 175 or 250 Newton trust me it's worth it and they also come with a nice visor a clear visor which will protect you from spray because actually several people have been known to drown from the spray in bad weather even though they've got a life jacket on because the spray they can't help but breathe it in okay so we've covered that that's on the uh, safety side when it comes to waterproofs everybody's trying to save money today there's several companies out there that sell them there's the big marks we all know the names we all know the products but it is possible to buy really good quality waterproofs without paying a fortune. Things you have to look for that I would advise is that it has a nice polar collar that comes really high, right up behind your ears, halfway up the back of your head. A hood is something, is a personal thing. I don't like them because I wear glasses and when you've got the hood up and you've got the face mask up and the hoods up, when you turn your head, it knocks your glasses off you can't see me I prefer to wear one of the modern sou'westers now these come in several forms the best one comes with a hard shell in the top of the head now the handy thing with this is a lot of us sell smaller yachts with a boom that here just above your ear I know you smack it now and then even though you've lived on the boat for years but us, our old boat I still bang my head on the boom if you got one of these sou'westers, they cover your neck, they cover your face, but leave your eyes clear. So you can turn your head, you can see what's what. They've got a, a polar inside for keeping you warm, a good strap around the chin for keeping it on, and the safety shell. So if you get clouded with something, you've got good protection for the bumps. You know, not much air on this one, so I need protection. Gloves, again, there are loads of gloves on the net very expensive very cheap um, even when wet you can get gloves that have a product in them called Thinsulate now this is a very good product made by 3M in America it's a special material for retaining warmth and what it does is it reflects the warmth back into the into the glove even when they're wet these gloves will keep your hands warm I've got a pair here and when I'm carshering, pressure cleaning the boat in the winter, it's bitterly cold here. Like today, it's one degree and snowing. I put those gloves on, even when they're wet, they'll keep my hands warm. And it's very important that you keep your hands warm. Why? If an emergency arises and you have no sensation in your hands, how the hell are you gonna help somebody? How are you gonna undo a buckle? How are you gonna do a buckle up? How are you gonna tie a bowling if your hands can't be felt? can't feel the rope. Gloves important. When you're sailing, I advocate be very very careful if you're wearing gloves and you're sailing. Some of the major accidents that happen on yachts are people wearing gloves that don't fit properly and they wind the line around the winch, wind the sheet around the winch without realizing they trap a finger, the finger of the glove in the winch. It either pulls or somebody winds finger broken finger if you're anchoring take heed never no matter how cold how warm how soft your hands are never ever ever wear gloves when you're letting the anchor out or bringing it in if you get that glove caught in two links and it pulls it could do one or three things it could break your fingers it could literally rip your hand off or you could be cast overboard. So never gloves when you're anchoring. If you have to push your anchor out, 
because it doesn't launch on its own. Use a deck brush, use a boat hook, use a winch handle. Never, ever put your hands there and push the anchor out. It's an accident, my friends, that's just waiting to happen, and I've seen it happen. Okay, so we've got another little thing. When you're sailing, you're sitting in the cockpit, you've got all your nice, warm, snooky stuff on, you've got your sou'wester, if you're like me, you've got your gloves, you've got your nice, warm boots and socks on, but you're sitting there for a long time. If there's only two of you on board and say, even for a small passage, you'll say, coming from Falmouth to Brittany, that's a 24 hour trip. So that's 24 hours you're in the elements. Now, even in the summer, at night, temperatures drop. And what you don't realize is how far they can drop. You can go from a daytime temperature in Celsius from 25 degrees down to a temperature of 16 at night. Now that doesn't sound a lot, but it is, it's enormous, especially to your body. Even with all your waterproofs on and such like, you can still get cold, believe it or not, because you've been sitting still. Have you eaten enough? <coughs> Are you drinking enough? If you don't drink sufficient, and I mean water, not booze, never, never booze when you're sailing. If you don't drink enough, your body starts to lose water. It'll lose it by sweating. Yep, sweating even when you're cold. I know it sounds daft, but it happens. So your special clothing is venting away the sweat and your body is dehydrating. Dehydration can cause major problems. One, you start to not think clearly. You start to find it difficult to make decisions and you don't realize it. So you don't quite helm up when you should or helm down when you should. You don't sheet in a bit enough. You think, oh, I'll put the reef in later because I can't be bothered. It's not complacency. It's something that creeps up on you. So now we're going to get into this little bit about hypothermia. Hypothermia is a medical problem that you have to think really, really, really carefully about. It's the signs. Now I can only give you a few ideas, but this is something you want to keep a close eye on. Personally, if you're sailing for 24 hours or more, if you're ocean sailing, it's a completely different thing because you're on a wind pilot, the boat sailing itself, you can be undercover. It's not quite the same problem, but still you have to think of it. This is more for your people coming from England to France or, you know, 24 hour, 48 hour sail or two or three day sail. Never leave the person on the helm for more than two hours. People say to me, but if it's two hours on and two hours off, how am I going to sleep? Trust me, your body becomes acclimatized, but you have to have a system. Now what we do, we're lucky. In our boat, we have a wheelhouse. We're warm in here. We can vent it to be cool in the summer if we want. In the, in the winter, I can sail in this boat at 25 degrees C inside with the central heat on. If you're in a yacht with a cockpit, it's a completely different thing. Even sitting behind the spray hood, it gets cold, it gets chilly, you get tired. So two hours is more than enough. Now what we do is if the person, whoever's on the helm, the person who's resting, gets up at 10 minutes before the two hours, makes a drink, makes a snack, and puts it on the table. They have their snack to take into the cockpit. When the person comes off the helm, they've got a warm drink and a snack and straight into the bed that I've just got out of so they're nice and warm. And leave them alone. Unless you need that person in an emergency or to go on deck, you never do that alone. That person's left to sleep. Believe me, once they've had the drink and a snack, they'll be asleep in 10 minutes. So they'll get an hour and 20 minutes of sleep before they're going to get up and do the same thing. Now, while you're watching, if you come on watch, so you're taking over from the person who is on watch. A few things you can look for, are they shivering? When they're talking to you, is their speech good? Or are they slurring their speech a little bit or mumbling, you know, not but Another thing is, are they breathing really slowly and shallow? For otherwise, you're not, you know, good breath, so 
shallow breaths. If you see these signs, check their pulse. Now, a normal person's pulse is between 60 and 80. If it's lower, get them inside and get them warmed up. Okay? Another thing is clumsiness. You'll find when they're walking around, they trip over things or they don't grab things right. You know, these are people that you sell with all the time. They used to do in the sheets, the halyards, everything. And suddenly, you know, it's a bit of a bugger putting the, the sheet onto the winch. Keep an eye out for that. And coordination. Are they doing things right? By coordination, it's hand to mouth, hand to face. Whatever they're doing, it should be as they normally are when they're home. Look and see if they're a bit sleepy. Or if they sort of say, oh, I feel really knackered, you know, I ache a bit. Another sign. Another thing is, if they're confused, if you ask them, when you're coming off watch, they have to tell you what's your course, what the wind is, what the sails are, what reefs are in, so they know what you're on. You're on starboard or port tack, you've got one sheet of one reef in the mainsail and a couple of rolls in the Genoa, and I'm on course 135, and our speed is 5.2 knots, whatever. They should be able to tell you this clearly and precisely. If they don't, this means two things. It means hypothermia could be setting in because they're getting memory loss because they can't remember what they've just looked at. And the other thing is they're getting confused. These are danger signs, my friend. Danger signs. The worst is if they lose consciousness. You come on watch, the person there looks like they're asleep and you can't rouse them. Then you have a major problem. If a person loses consciousness, you need medical help and you need it quick. The other thing to look for, especially in kids, is their skin. If a child starts to get hypothermia, their skin goes bright red, and I mean bright, bright red. It looks like they've been sitting in front of a fire, funny enough, and their skin feels really, really cold and clammy, you know, like sticky. If you see these signs, you strip off, strip the kid off, get in a sleeping bag with them, and get them warm. If anybody, and I don't want silly remarks on this. If anybody is sailing in a pair, if it's two blokes, a man or a woman, it doesn't matter. If somebody shows signs of hypothermia, the important thing is to warm them up slowly. Do not give them hot drinks. Dangerous. Give them some tepid fluid, glass of tepid water. Get their clothes off, because their clothes won't warm them up, they're already cold. Put them in a sleeping bag with you or under a quilt with you and cuddle up until they warm up. Now, if you don't know the girl you're sailing with very well, trust me, if she's suffering from hypothermia and you cuddle her back to consciousness and good health, she'll love you for it. And if you've got a mate who's in the same situation, <coughs> he won't give a damn that you've been cuddled up to his ass for a couple of hours. He'll be very grateful. So don't be silly. If you see these signs, do the right thing. Now, I know it sounds a funny subject, but it is a danger that you can face summer and winter. It makes no difference. Hypothermia can set in. See, one of the big problems is the macho thing. Or the girly thing. Sorry, ladies. Now, I like to wear my bikini top, or I'll wear my bikini while I'm sailing. Yeah, it's all full and good. You get a nice tan, you actually get burned, and you can get cancer. So be careful you're using the right sunscreen. Protect your head. And your eyes, wear sunglasses. Watch tops of your ears when you put sun cream on. I've, no, I've seen loads of people forget to put sun cream on here. These buggers burn like mad. Trust me, they really do. The nose burns like mad. So if you're out sailing and it's a stinking hot day, okay, do a bit of sunbathing. But just be careful. Watch for the signs of cooling down because you're enjoying yourself so much Perhaps you're both at the helm, one at the helm, one in the cockpit, sunning yourself. You fall asleep and the other one doesn't realise you're cooking. So please be careful. Sailing is a thing we're supposed to enjoy. It sounds very complicated, I know, and this sounds very serious, because it is. You need to wear the right things. Now on a lighter note, this is for the girls. If you're sailing with your boyfriend, and you want him smelling nice, get him to do the washing. Now I'm sure you girls know all about these little blue pellets. Uh, what they call, Sal? Unstoppable. 
yeah, unstoppables they're called. They're tiny little blue pellets, and what you do is when you do the washing, doesn't matter if you're doing it in a bucket or a washing machine, makes no difference. You put a cap full of these pellets in the water and dissolve them. You wash your clothes, then rinse them, hang them out and dry. Now when you're finished, there's a very good product on the market called dry bags. They're not expensive, very, very handy. When you're sure the clothes are absolutely dry, roll them up. Put them in your dry bag, and we've tested this, I guarantee you in 10 weeks time, those clothes will smell lovely and fresh. <coughs> so girls, try and educate your boys to do the washing and use these little pellets, and you'll always smell nice. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope it's taught you something. Sorry for the wincing, but it's very bright here today. Let's all enjoy our sailing. Let's all be safe. Okay, guys, here's the next one. Thanks for watching.